Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today I'm reaching back into my inventory of reviews to examine a pen I reviewed about a year and a half ago, back in April of 2019. This is the Picasso 915. The reason I'm digging into the archives is because I rediscovered it while doing comparisons with the Gin House Centennial and the Moonman M800S a couple of weeks ago. I pulled it out of my pen case and decided to put some ink back into it and write with it. I remember when I first reviewed it right out of the box, my first impressions were that it was heavy, didn't post well, and it wrote dry and a bit scratchy. I rewatched the review and I had attempted to make it wetter and had run the nib over some micromesh and then abandoned the pen as disappointing. It has languished uninked in my pen case since the spring of 2019. But when I pulled it out again, I thought, it's such a pretty pen, and the nib is really quite unique with its piece symbol dove with an olive branch design. I thought I should try again with tuning the nib, now that I have a little more experience with nib tuning, and will not be as timid at this time. So I spent about a half an hour on it, and actually removed some significant baby's bottom, and straightened the tines, and now it writes like a champ. The pen is also still available at reasonable prices on eBay and Etsy. So let's take another look at this Picasso 915 in ruby red right now. So this unboxing is brought to you via my Wayback Machine from April 2019. I waited about 20 days for this one and I'm very excited. There it is. I paid a little bit of extra for the box. So let's see what this box looks like. So, some uh, Chinese lettering on the back. See if we can get this open. There we go. Little tag on the inside there. side up there we go so it's a uh, I'd say faux leather but it feels more like a, a vinyl of some sort with uh, Picasso foil stamped into the top and some black stitching around okay so we have a little booklet in here in a little fold a, a tag that says Picasso on one side and this is where I, I do my disclaimer I am a guitar player and I have three fingernails that I use as picks see them they're not gross I keep them trimmed none of my other fingernails are long I play guitar so I'm not trimming my nails so get over it internet sure buddy but first you have to watch this unwelcome pop-up ad I don't want probiotics. Then press the skip ad button. Why should I do all this work? They're really good pictures, Chris. Number three will shock you. Okay, I'll press it. Oh, no, you pressed in the wrong place, and now you're being sent to the ad's website, which also has additional pop-ups. This is a nightmare. So a little tag, a little booklet, and Chinese, and whoops, some English. There we go. Brief introduction, fountain pen, rollerball, yep, and some English. Writing instruments, some instructions on how to fill your pen, what, how to use it, cleaning, and maintenance. Very nice. And a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And the pen in its condom. Let's get it out of that. Ooh, I'm excited already. Has a nice little bed. Let's look at this before I put it away. Soft, a little bit of foam, and it does not lift up. So let's put that aside. 
while we look at this beautiful pen. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. Right off the bat, let's observe that this pen might pay a little bit of homage um, and have some lineage from the Parker Duofold but it certainly makes a few practical and aesthetic modifications. This pen can sit alongside my other dual-fold pretenders from Jinhao to Kaigalu to Conklin and to Moonman. And it will shortly be joined by yet another dual-fold lookalike, the Wingsong 670, coming soon to your favorite pen review channel. And remember what Steve Jobs said, quote, good artists copy, great artists steal, unquote, which of course he stole from Picasso, who actually never said it, but stole it from William Faulkner and Igor Stravinsky, who stole it from T.S. Eliot, who stole it from W.H. Davenport Adams. You are what you do. Of course, I stole that from Carl Jung, but I digress. From what I gleaned from my previous review, Picasso is a Chinese-made fountain pen, but the brand Picasso and Pimeo are part of a company based in France. To be clear, none of this pen, from the nib to the pen to the box it came in, were made in or even shipped from France. But the company that commissions and distributes these pens is based in France, you know, like Monteverdi does from the States. Oh, snap! So anyway, from the top we see a clear acrylic dome over a gold metal medallion that has art collection Pimeo engraved along with uh, a Picasso logo. It's hard to see whether it got right side up. There we go. That's right side up. This is very nice. This uh, isn't cheap, cloudy plastic. It's a nice clear acrylic and it makes the, the gold medallion really sparkle and shine. The finial then tapers up to a gold metal band which secures the finial and the clip. The gold metal clip is very stylish and springy and very usable. The black enamel metal cap tapers up significantly to about here and then it goes straight to a very decorative cap band which is gold metal filigree over black enamel and has Picasso in a script, kind of their script kind of logo and a heart motif pattern that wraps all the way around the cap. The cap extends another about three millimeters and then it, there's a small step down to the barrel, which is made of acrylic resin and tapers all the way down to a gold band and a black enameled metal end finial, which is flat on the bottom. Let's take a look at this resin for a moment. It is nicely chatoyant, marbled ruby color that is slightly translucent. Very lovely. The cap snaps off to reveal a long tapering black plastic and textured section that has a gold ring at the bottom and a larger gold metal band with a lip on it towards the number six size steel nib which is two-toned. Let's get a closer view of this nib. The biggest and coolest feature of this nib is the dove with an olive branch in its mouth and spread wings in a silver color and the rest of the nib is in gold. Then there is Picasso in that script logo again, and France and an M for medium. The word France here doesn't indicate where this nib or even the pen is from, but the home base of the Picasso company. This seems to be typical of companies that commission their products from Chinese pen companies like Jinhao, Hero, and Wingsung. Putting USA on the nib of a Monteverdi pen doesn't keep it from being Chinese any more than putting France 
on this Picasso makes it French. And here is the plastic feed. The nib and feed are not in any nib collar assembly and they're in there very securely. I haven't been able to get it out. It uh, doesn't matter because this is a slightly unusual nib size and shape for a number six size nib and another brand actually might not fit it if I could get it out. The inside of the cap has a plastic liner that integrates the clutch of the snap closure as well as sealing the nib. The section unscrews to reveal an included cartridge converter which has a nice substantial quality to it and has the Picasso script logo on it as well. It isn't standard international but what I call Chinese standard as it takes the Chinese standard cartridges that are branded either Jinhao or Hongdian or whatever. Those cartridges are available in bulk on Etsy and eBay and uh, also on Amazon. The section is mostly metal except for the plastic covering on the grip and the top of the barrel has an insert of metal threads so you can have sturdy metal on metal threading right there. The cap posts and it sits inside that plastic liner so it actually grips the pen very nicely and it's very secure but that heavy uh, metal cap just severely back weights this pen and makes it extremely long so it's constantly pulling up and so I would not be able to write with this in this configuration. In the hand unposted the pen is very comfortable with this long textured uh, section. The pen balances nicely and that number six nib is very nice. This pen retails for $35.09 US on Etsy uh, or $40.50 with the box. The box is actually very nice. I don't have it anymore because I gifted another Picasso pen, the 975 at Sandy Aurora uh, to a friend and used the box as a presentation gift piece. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Picasso 915. And here it is with a Moonman M600S Jinhao Centennial, a Conklin Geograph, and a Kaigaloo 316. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And you can see immediately that this Picasso started out being the biggest one of the group but when it's posted it's actually shorter than the others. Not that you can write with any of these pens while they're posted. Uh, this is just too unwieldy with the back weight of this cap. And you can see the size of the number six plus nib on the Picasso compared to a number six size nib standard size um, on the other pens. And here we are zoomed in on those nibs and you can see that the Picasso is visibly larger than either of these two number six size standard nibs. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Picasso nine one five and it is a medium steel number six size nib and the ink today is Hiroshizuku Yamabuto. Let's check the wetness. So this is a very wet indeed. As I said in the introduction, um, 
I had done some fairly tentative work on this nib to make it wetter and smoother back in April of 2019, but about a month ago I spent a good amount of time on this nib. The first thing I did was to inspect the tines uh, to make sure that they were aligned. Then I used my spark plug gapping tool and I used it at, you probably can't read that, but it's 0 0.004 inches or 0 0.102 millimeters thick. And I flossed the nib with that spark plug gapping tool a couple of times and got it up to this kind of wetness. Very wet indeed. I really, really like it in terms of its flow. The nib needed some smoothing but also had a touch of baby's bottom. So I stroked it a few times, um, a few strokes at a time. Stroke! 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 Stop mocking me! Uh, while testing the nib each time that I was stroked it on some, some 8,000 grit micromesh. Remember that 8,000 grit micromesh is almost twice as abrasive as your normal 12,000 grit micro mesh is so you're taking significantly more tipping material away as you stroke it there you go thank you sir there you go so i was very careful and so should you be when i got it writing the way i liked it it had a great deal of feedback which i expected from the 8000 grit uh, micro mesh then i polished the nib with the 12000 in figure eights rolling the nib back and forth as I went, make sure there's no flat spots until I dialed it in to the right amount of feedback that I wanted. It's now beautifully wet and smooth with just a hint of feedback. Very, very smooth and very wet. Here is the swatch for Eroshizuku Yamabudo. What I like about this is this, this fuchsia color, which I really love, and it shades very nicely, but it's got some gold sheening in it as well and when it dries it dries a bit darker as you can see up here it doesn't uh, jump off the page and scream at you as you would expect a fuchsia color too and here is robert oster muddy dragon and diamine merlot as to line variation well it's a very stiff nib very very stiff and you're not going to get any line variation out of it at all that's no pressure that's a little bit of pressure it makes it a little bit wetter but it's not a flex nib by any stretch and my Richard Binder chart shows that this line this line here is 0.7 millimeters uh, which makes it a Western Uh, medium to broad and a Japanese uh, broad and for our quote today of course this uh, quote is erroneously attributed to uh, Stephen Jobs uh, and Pablo Picasso And it was adapted from the original by W.H. Davenport and Mr. T.S. Eliot. And some reverse writing. This is very nice. Look at the line I'm getting out of this. It's uh, about a fine now. That's like a 0.4 millimeter line right there. Whereas that's 0.7. And it stays wet in reverse as well. Very nice. And some quick writing. feed keeps up very very nicely indeed 
So what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? I have a few issues with this pen, but the biggest issue I had originally was how the nib wrote. Being a Chinese nib, I attribute that to the luck of the draw. Now that I've gained enough experience to successfully tune this nib to my own liking, this is a very usable fountain pen for me right now. However, there are a couple of things to note. Uh, the first being the weight. This is not a light pen. It is not overly heavy when it's unposted in the hand, but it is substantial. You may or may not like that. But with the heavy cap, the pen becomes significantly back weighted. And even though it does post, I can't write with it like this. That back weighting not only has to do with the cap, but this piece on the back end of the barrel uh, is brass as well, enameled black brass. And uh, the barrel is uh, acrylic, but there is more metal right there for those threads. And then, of course, the metal section. So there's a lot of metal on this pen. But as I say, when it's unposted, it is still balanced towards the nib, which is good. So if posting is a big deal for you, I'd probably avoid this pen. Plus, this nib doesn't seem to be swappable. I haven't tried hard to get this nib out, and I could probably soak it out. I don't want to run the risk of breaking it. It's quite a unique nib, and I like the size and the look of it. So I'd hate to have to break it, then I'd have to buy a whole new pen, because I don't think you can get those. On to what I do like about this pen. Of course, now it writes beautifully. But also, it is a beautiful fountain pen. It is well built. The threads all mesh nicely. There are no sharp edges. The filigree on that cap band is very attractive. And the dove on that nib is very attractive. And the finial on the top with the acrylic and that medallion is all very attractive. And the pen is relatively affordable at around $40 US. So I'm glad that I rediscovered this pen, and it is also still available online. With the box, it becomes a really lovely gift for someone who loves pretty pens. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.